Welcome back to the channel and welcome to the first episode of my new series on riders and in particular Kafka. So Mass Transit added support for riders about two years ago and riders kind of go alongside the bus, thus the riders, people ride the bus, haha, ha, funny name. Um, but the, the intent was, you know, traditional message brokers like RabbitMQ, Azure Service Bus, Amazon SQS, they all deal with queues and topics or exchanges and they're very much, you know, they're queues. They get consumed from the front and then the messages are gone. Um, event streaming, on the other hand, has, I mean, it's wildly popular. It's used by pretty much every company now. I mean, Kafka or Event Hubs, either of those, they're both supported by Mass Transit. I'm going to focus on Kafka because I really want to kind of dig in and kind of show how that all works. Uh, and it's easier to focus on one that is kind of widely used across a variety of industries. Whereas Event Hubs only runs on Azure and Kafka runs anywhere. So I kind of want to go in there and kind of set the stage for that of what we're going to build. Riders is outlined on the docs. Uh, all the NuGet packages are there. Um, but I want to kind of cover the sample that we have and kind of give this introduction. I'm going to, this is probably going to be like about a four part series. There's a lot to cover. Uh, but I wanted this, in this first one to kind of go over the high level, the environments they're using, the tools we're using so that you'll know how to get this set up and run it yourself. Now within this sample, I'm actually using two different solutions. Normally, if you've watched my videos, you know I'm crazy about Docker. I run everything in Docker. Some people don't like Docker. We're not gonna use Docker at all this time. In fact, we're gonna use two cloud SaaS platforms. The first one being Confluent Cloud. So Confluent Cloud is duh, a cloud-based offering of Kafka. It's run by Confluent, the company that kind of manages all the commercial Kafka offerings. And I have a demo cluster set up in one of their environments. So if I jump into this demo cluster, I can see the topics that I have. In this example, we're going to simulate a system that runs a, uh, a, a warehouse environment for like a, a distribution company. So multiple warehouses can be supported. Each warehouse would have its own topic. And those topics would be used by the warehouses to send data back up to Kind of a centralized cloud services that manages products coming into that you know we're going to use you know superficial i widget type products um, but each of these products has a serial number you know you buy an ipod it has a serial number and we're going to track those serial numbers through the system to make sure that the products that we're receiving are the products that we're expecting and also to be able to track those as they're added into containers within the warehouse and then ultimately shipped out you know, and in later episodes, we'll add some stuff for like, you know, doing some correlation with different events. So that's the setting that I want to put in place here. So the way I've set up Confluent Cloud, and this is just confluent.cloud, you can get a free environment. I think you can get a month free with like $400 worth of credit. Um, I've created several different topics. The first topic I have is the events for my warehouse, which warehouse 47, you know, 47 is a magic number. Uh, and then I'm going to have events from my ERP platform that are going to take the purchase order data that we get and tell the warehouses what products they should expect. So that's kind of what we're going to build with here, and I'll dig through this in a second. But why stop at one cloud service, right? Let's use another one. So let's use MongoDB as well. I'm going to run MongoDB using MongoDB Atlas, which is the cloud-based offering of MongoDB. Um, it's multi-cloud, multi-region. All the things, the power and capability of MongoDB Atlas is really great. I swear this isn't a paid promotion, but I just like both of these services. They're super reliable, they're easy to see, and you can you got some really nice UI around your data. So super slick stuff. I'm totally in favor of it. And hey, you didn't have to install Docker, so super fun. Now let's jump into the code. So the code, I have two separate services. And again, we're using Mass Transit 8010 in this solution. Uh, there have been a ton of recent updates in Kafka. The latest release had a lot of cool new features, a lot of optimizations on multi-consumer, multi-concurrency, uh, key-based routing, a lot of cool stuff. So I'm going to cover a lot in this series because a lot of this has been refreshed. Like I said, it's been two and a half years since we first launched Riders and at first added Kafka support. And the Kafka SDK, our knowledge of Kafka, how we scale Kafka has gotten so much better by using this in production that we've managed to throw a bunch of updates on this. So a lot of cool stuff to go over. I'm gonna kind of jump into that. But first I wanna kind of dive into this sample. 
So the sample solution, there are two services. There's an API and they're both running right now. I have a sample backend and a sample API. And we'll look at the output of that when we get there. The API is pretty simple. Four methods, they're all posts. I have the ability to post a manifest, and this is when we get a purchase order received that tells us what products are in that uh, manifest and which location or warehouse they'll be received at. So this is like something that would come from our ERP platform in response to a, a purchase order being submitted. We have the receiving API, which is, you know, simulates if an RF gun had scanned a package as it's being received on the dock of a warehouse, they're going to scan that product, the SKU, the serial number with the purchase order number came in, basically that bill of lading that comes in off that truck so that they can scan those products as they come into the warehouse. The other one we're going to have is the pick. Pick is when you take something off a shelf and put it in a container for actually delivering it to a customer. So this is going to include the order number that was ordered that for the order, the line number that is being picked, the SKU, the serial number, and then the license plate number is the unique number on that container, which is you know a box or whatever that they happen to be picking the items off the shelf and putting them in a box. It's a lot of moving boxes around. That's basically distribution in a nutshell. If you think of like what an Amazon or somebody does, it's a whole lot of this. So, and then the final event that we're gonna deal with, and these are all just APIs we provide because these are systems that are running in that warehouse that are gonna communicate with these APIs, not knowing what happens in the background because they don't care. This is just, I did this, I did this, I did this. The shipping API is the last one. This is the one that's gonna say, okay, I have this container, I sealed it up, I put a sticker on it, it has a tracking number, it's going via this carrier, Bye bye it's out. So. Four APIs, super simple. I wanted to kind of show the different states because we're just using these APIs to push events into the system. All these APIs do is write to Kafka. They're just like, okay, this happened. I'm gonna transfer this event. One of them does a little bit more and I'll show that probably in the third episode, but enough to get started there just to let you know what we're doing. So let's look at what happens. And I'm gonna jump through my favorite little Postman app. And I am going to start with that ERP solution. I am basically going to say, hey, I sent out a purchase order. I'm expecting two iPod shuffles. They have these serial numbers, and I'm expecting them at warehouse 47. So I'm going to fire this off. Boom, 202 accepted. Everything was great. If I go and look at my process, if I look at the run, I can see that I actually have some logging that a message was sent to the events.erp Kafka topic, and it was a manifest with a purchase order number 47. I can see that the back end actually processed that through the shipment manifest received event, and it's handled by the shipment manifest received consumer. We'll jump into that in a second. First, let's go see what happened. We've got MongoDB. If we look at our topics, not much to see there. I'm not really monitoring, but let's look at a topic so we can see messages as they come out. We're going to jump over to MongoDB. Let's look at the product location collection. Two items, the iPod shuffles, their serial numbers, and their locations. This is used as a lookup table. And the reason I want this is because later on I'm going to show how we validate at a particular warehouse against this API to say, hey, I just got this iPod shuffle. Is it expected here? You know, is this a product that I actually need or do I need to set this aside because, it, you know, we got some unexpected shipment and it wasn't expected. So that's the data that we're going to use for that validation. These are idempotent. If I were to run that topic through again, it would just basically say that's already in the collection. It doesn't upsert. Gotta love Mongo for that. Upserts are awesome. So that's what happens when we hit that first API. The next API that we're going to hit is the receiving API. So we're going to say that we received that iPod shuffle. And we're, going to, we're at location 47. Everything is cool. We're going to say send. Boom. 202 accepted. So let's go look at what happened. If we look at the log messages, we can see that it was received by a random handler. We can see that we received the warehouse event that we received an iPod shuffle of that serial number. So let's go look at, we have a saga that processes this, and I don't think the saga handles that one. Yeah, the saga doesn't handle that one. This is just the validation one. But now that we've received it at the warehouse, we can now pick it. So let's go pick that iPod shuffle. 
We got the license plate number of our container. That's the box that we're putting this in. It's order number line one, just simple US order, serial number, source system, boom, accepted. We go out and look, we picked. We picked for order number one, two, three, four, item, line item one, boom. Let's go look at our sagas now. Oh, so now we have a saga state machine that is again, mass transit against a topic endpoint. I'll go into the code in a second because you'll be able to see this code if you pull down the sample, but you gotta understand what it does so you know what to expect. So the current state is picking. I'm picking a box. I just received an item. I have some products in here. What are the products? Oh, I have an iPod shuffle. It's serial number 1221, order line one. I'm gonna pick that. Let's go pick something else. Let's go pick that second iPod shuffle. And let's say that this is order line two. Let's say I ordered two of them. Boom. Picked order line two. If I go and look, if I refresh this up, I can see that within my products array, I now have two of them. I have two iPod shuffles, order line one and two, two separate distinct serial numbers. Both were pickable. Both were put into the order. I'm still picking. Now let's look at the last item. I'm gonna ship that box. And I want it express overnight because I want my music right away. I'm gonna set up that order number. I got a tracking number and I'm gonna hit send. Accepted by the API. The API processes the shipped event. And then when I go out to the database and refresh that status, I can see that my package has been shipped. Oh yeah, it's gonna actually let me edit. That's kind of crazy. I have the box number, I have the tracking number. All of that data is in that saga and that saga is now in the shipped state. So that's kind of the end-to-end -end workflow of how these APIs work and how that is working. All of this data is going through Kafka. If I go over to Confluent, because I opened this on purpose, I can actually see all of those messages that were sent while I was waiting there. The first message was the container ship. Well, the last message, this is last in, first out order. Let's start at the bottom. The first was the product received. Remember, I received that serial number and I received it at the location 47 from RF 47. So that was one of them. The, the UI of Confluent is able to show me that value and it's pretty cool. Then the next message was a product picked. I picked that first shovel with serial number 1221. I then picked the second shuffle, serial number 1222, order line two. And you can see that these are wrapped in here. These are different events, product picked, product picked, product received. And the final one was the container shipped, all within this kind of surrounding envelope here. So these were the messages that were received, but let's look a little closer. What is the schema? Confluent Cloud is gonna show this. Confluent uses a schema registry, and when you produce events, it uploads that event. The events that I'm producing are in the Avro format, which is highly recommended for Kafka. You can use JSON as well, but I like Avro. Um, and this is the Avro contract. I can fully explore this. I can say, oh, what are the fields? Oh, I have source system ID. I have um, the event ID. I have the timestamp and I have the event. The event is one of, this is what's called an Avro union type. You can actually put multiple types into a single envelope, especially if you have common outer data and store that information in there. This is either one of product received, product picked or container shipped. And these are separate Avro records. These are all compiled using the Avro gen utility for the Avro schema files that are in the project. So you can see how that works, but I've already generated them for you. They're checked in. You don't have to deal with any of that. All of that is visible. The other cool thing is I can see the actual schema lineage. So I can see that the warehouse API is talking to events ERP. It's talking to warehouse 47. It's using different consumer groups. The current consumer group is the sample back end. I have two, the same consumer group is used for the app. So probably not smart, but whatever. I can come in here, I can see that the difference are, I can see the consumers. I can see that what I have topics, I'm consumed to events, warehouse 21, events, warehouse 47. If I had hundred warehouses, each one could have their own topic. And then I'm partitioning that load across multiple topics. Each topic could have multiple partitions, super slick. I have my ERP uh, topic. So this gives us really good visibility. It gives us really cool visualization of where our messages are flowing in Kafka. And again, this is just mass transit using Confluent Cloud, using Kafka. You could run this locally if you wanted to, you just have to change the connection strings to local. 
I did it with Confluent Cloud because I think the tools that they provide are super slick. So I got my data in MongoDB Atlas. I got my topics running up in Confluent Cloud. Let's take a quick look at the code. So the code and the solution has the typical layout you see for a lot of my samples. I have the contracts, I have components, I have the sample warehouse API. That's one project you want to run that's going to be hosting those APIs. I have the sample backend. That's where all the consumers are reading from Kafka. And you can see the setup that I have here. Let's start with the sample backends program CS. I'm going to point out, we're not using RabbitMQ. We're not using Azure Service Bus. We aren't using anything. We have using in memory because we have to, but we aren't using the bus at all. You don't need it. It's not even part of the program. It just has to be there because riders ride on the bus. So I put some shortcuts in here just to kind of make it. I add some Kafka components. I set up my MongoDB configuration. This is just to register all the different types and containers. Uh, I add my consumer for receiving the shipment manifest. I add a Saga state machine with the container state using the database names and the connection strings. You will need to fill this out. You will need to, if you, once you set up your free Confluent Cloud account and your free MongoDB Atlas account, you'll need to go in and set some host names, some usernames, passwords, connection strings. All this stuff shows you what you need on the different sites um, to connect to that. Um, and the usernames and everything are all set there. Uh, I'll show you some mocked up ones down the road. I just don't want to show you mine because you'll log into my account. Um, I show how to configure Kafka using Kafka. I set my client ID for the back end. You can see that I set up two topic endpoints because they're con Kafka topics. We don't have a configure endpoints here. We actually specify each topic specifically. We set up our Avro deserializers. We set a bunch of data. I'm going to go into a lot of this in the next episode. The first one is really like, this is what we're going to be talking about. This is the sample. The sample is linked in the description. You can go ahead and pull it down and start messing with it. Hopefully this first episode has got you kind of dialed in of what we're going to talk about and what we're going to cover. It's totally cool stuff. This stuff runs at super high volume. Last test I did, it was like 50,000 messages a second going through MT, pushing through these topics. So the thing is just crazy ingest rates. Most people don't even need that. Most people are lucky to hit 100 a second in you know, a real world application. But if you've got 100 warehouses doing 100 a second, that's 10,000 a second. So think about the numbers. You know, Mass Transit scales really well. It spreads across topics. This is going to be a super cool series, so stay tuned. Watch for the next episode. We'll catch you next time.